I'm Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing my mid-month wrap-up for the month of October. I can't believe we're already over halfway through October. It's been, this year has been crazy. Every month I just feel like it's just flying by, which I feel like that almost every year, but this year especially, it's been going by really fast. We will be getting into all the books that I read in the first half of October. So these are going to be all the books that I read from October 1st through October 15th. Um, I think I read as about like 13 books in the first half of October. So pretty darn decent. Um, I was in a pretty good mood. Um, caveat, a few of those, like two, maybe three, are novellas so that did also help me to bump up my number because those were like super short and I was able to read them in like a sitting um but yeah so we're gonna get into all the books that I read so first one that I read for the month of October is gonna be Marrying Winterborn by Lisa Claypes. I thought since I have my new bookshelves up and my historical books are a little bit more organized and I can actually find them. I thought I was gonna, I would try to do these wrap ups and show the physical copy of my book if I have it, just so I don't have to try to put in like a little picture. But so we'll see how this goes and see if I like doing this. Sometimes I feel like it's just easier to put the little picture in, but whatever. Anyway, so this is the second book of the Ravenel series um and I'm gonna be honest right off the bat that I've read so many books this month and especially the ones at the beginning of the month I totally forgot that I read this at the beginning of this month I thought I read, read this at this and a couple of the other first books in this month I thought I read at the end of last month but apparently I didn't I read it this month so I don't really remember a ton of what happens um but I, anyway this is the um second book in the Ravenel series so like the first one I was kind of eh on I didn't really care for mostly because it set up a lot of stuff that happens in this book um, between Helen, who is, um, it's kind of hard to describe, because in the first one, it's the widow of the Rivenel Dukedom or something, I don't know. It's his widow, and then his cousin get married, so the guy that passed away, um, this is his sister. So all of his, I think he's got three sisters and all of his sisters get really like overlooked by the family. Like they don't really matter. Like it was all about him and they didn't really let them do too much. Um, so it's about Helen who's seen as like a pretty, she's pretty shy and meek. Um, I think, I think she might be the sister that likes plants if I'm remembering correctly. And then anyway, and then it's with Mr. Winterborn and he owns a big like department store and he is like friends with the new, the guy that inherited the dukedom or whatever. Um, and he was in like some sort of accident in the first one. And so he was staying at their house and they're kind of like taking care of him. And so that's how these two characters meet. And, um, Winterborn is absolutely fascinated by Helen and wants her to be his wife. Um, and that's pretty much all I remember about this one. I don't remember a two ton. Um, I think the most unfortunate thing, at least to me, and probably why I'm not... I'm trying to get more into historical romances, but I haven't been super into them in the past is because I feel like a lot of them are very similar to one another, especially in groups of like series, I find, um, and especially for Lisa Claypess. Not that I dislike Lisa Claypess because I think her writing is really good and I do really, really like some of her stories, but overall, especially for her groups of books that are in series, I just feel like they 
are just way too similar to each other and I tend to like mix them all up in my head. So anyway, I gave this one three and a half stars. So it wasn't bad. It was, you know, it was okay. Um, so that's this one. Then I continued on with reading the Fallen Men series. So this is going to be Inked and Lies by Gianna Darling. This is the fifth book in the Fallen Men series. Um, this one is about Nova, who I don't think he has a specific role in the MC. So like we have um, King is the president's son. He, like so far we've just mostly been following characters in that family so the um zeus who's the president of the mc there's king who's his son and then we've also seen um harley rose which is his daughter and so the first four books are about them so now we're finally moving on to other members of the mc so we have like i said nova who is a member of the mc but like i said i don't think he has like a specific role and then um lila who ends up being his love interest so lila is his harley rose's like best friend um and this is gonna be this is a Kind of a friends to lovers romance but it's also an age gap romance and it's also a like best friend's brother or best friend sibling siblings best friend whatever um kind of romance so these two met when she was like six five or six like when she was really young and Nova was like 17 or something he was a teenager and he lived across the street from Lila and Nova and Lila's older brother became best friends um, and they did everything together and then doing things together they also had Lila kind of tagging along so they all kind of had sort of this like friendship thing but Lila has a lot of uh, pretty traumatic backstory um her father is a drug dealer and brings stuff home stuff to their home um a lot of just traumatic things happen to her um I did cry during this book but and she's always since she was a little girl um, has pined after Nova and has always held a torch out for him and loved him but he's always just kind of seen her as this best friend's little sister kind of thing um, and hasn't really moved forward with that until we get to this book and some of the events that happen in this book because there's a lot of bad guys um, bad things happening um, there are these bad people that are trying to bring really bad drugs into town and they are also setting up like a sex trafficking ring and they're trying to put the blame for all what they're doing on the fallen MC. So they're trying to take these people down because they're like, this is wrong. This is not okay. And then they're also like, especially cause you're blaming on us too. Um, so Lila ends up going kind of undercover to try to help with this. Um, and that kind of makes Nova, he doesn't like this and he starts to realize that Lila isn't this little girl anymore. She's an adult. Um, so anyway, it's about their romance. This one I actually gave, I gave four and a half stars and this one might be one that I consider bumping up to a five star. I was very pleasant, su pleasantly surprised by this one. This was one that I wasn't like super looking forward to reading I just didn't really care too much about it but it was one that just like very much surprised me by how much I enjoyed this story um especially because of like their past and like how they grew together and how they grew their love together it was just it was so sweet and heartbreaking and I absolutely loved this one so this this is probably my number two of the series because um, I did finish this series with so far. I think she, I think Gianna Darling is planning on writing another book in this series coming out next year. Um, so the books that are out so far, this is definitely my number two after Zeus's book. So, <coughs> then 
we have, uh, I don't know, Devil in Spring. I was like totally blanked on the title of this book. So this is the third book in the Ravenel series. Um, so this one is about another sister. Um, so there's Helen and then there's, um, twin sisters. Um, this one is Pandora. I always forget her name. Um, If you hear baby babbling during this video, that would be my daughter that is supposed to be going to sleep, but she's not. So just, just ignore that. At least she's not crying and screaming. Um, where was I? Anyway, so this is about her. Um, and this is her romance with, which is, I was very excited about this, um, Gabriel is his name. Gabriel Lord St. Vincent. And he is the son of um, two of Lisa Claypuss's prior love interests, like characters from the Wallflower series. Um, the characters um, in something in winter. Devil in winter, maybe? Something like that. It was the winter one. Um, from the Wallflower series. So this is their son. So you get to, this is one thing that I think people, why people really love this series is because she brings back to characters from her prior series and you get to see them, how they've grown up and see their children find love. Um, so that was really neat about this one, the, the nostalgic aspect of it. Um, but anyway, so Grey Beryl is kind of, he's a rake and he doesn't really want to get married. Um, and I don't remember. Oh, he gets caught in a like compromising situation with Pandora. And so they end up getting like kind of forced to get married almost. But Pandora does not want to get married. She is a very independent person. Um, she has invented a new board game and she is selling it at the Winterborn um, department store. And she wants to continue to have all rights to this board game that she invented. She wants to own her own business. Um, and she does not want to get married because if she does, then all of that is seen as her husband's property and his things and not hers. Um, so she does not like that. And then she's also just a very quirky character and I loved her. So I gave this four stars. This and one of the other books might be tied for my favorites of this series just because like I said I she was probably my one of my favorite heroines. I absolutely loved her. I loved her independence um, and I loved that Gabriel was such he's very swoony and he ended up starting to fall in love with her even though you know he originally didn't want to get married but he was just so enraptured by Pandora and fascinated by her and he was really <clears throat> When they do end up having to get married, he was like, I'm going to do everything I can to try to, you know, see if we can get around the law or what's going on so that you can keep your company and that it can be totally yours, uh, which I thought that was great that he was willing to do that. It's just they couldn't do it completely just because of the law at the time, which is BS, but whatever. Um, so this, that's this one. And I really like this one. It was really good. Then we have the next book in the Ravenel series. So this is number four now. Yes. Um, this is going to be Hello Stranger. This one is, has characters that relate to the Ravenel family, but aren't, at least at the initially, you don't realize that they're, they just seem like random kind of characters, even though you've met um, both of these characters in prior books. Um, so the hero heroine of this story is Garrett and she is the, um, only female doctor in England, which is super cool. Um, and she has her own practice. Um, and she, she met, I think she helped she was in one of the prior books where somebody got injured and she was like helping them or something, I think. I don't, I don't know. Um, and then the hero of the story is 
Ethan, that's his name. And he is a, I think he's like a former like detective or something. And he keeps running into Garrett because he doesn't think it's okay for her to be like out walking alone. Um, since she is a female, there could be lots of people that would try to hurt her when she's out alone. Or since she like advertises her business that she is the only like she's an only female and this is her where she's at um, her home. And he's like, this is not safe. Um, so he keeps running into her and kind of like helping her like saving her from these like nefarious guys. Um, but he's also trying to take down this, like, plot, some sort of, like, government plot or something to, like, take down the government or, I don't know, something, something like that was going on. Um, and they decide that they're going to have, like, a fling and then they're never going to see each other again. Well, then Ethan gets really 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 injured and so Garrett then has to try to save him um so that's pretty much the plot of this book so Ethan you find out I think in maybe one of the prior books it's like alluded to you and I think they talk about it more in this one that Ethan is a um bastard son of the Ravenels like the I can't remember if it's, if he's, like, the brother to the current male Ravenels that kind of took over the dukedom, or if he is, um, brother to, like, the sisters and the guy that died, Ravenels. I can't quite remember, but somehow he's related to them. Um, but that's this one. I gave this one four stars, too. I really like this, again, mostly because I thought the female character was, like, awesome. Um in her skill she definitely did some things that i definitely think are unethical um especially me being in the medical field like some of the stuff that she did was definitely a big no-no that you're not supposed to do but at the same time i can understand because she was trying to save the love of love if i could talk the love of her life um but yeah, I just, I thought she was awesome. But, and then I didn't, I don't know, I didn't really care for the whole, like, government plot thing. That kind of, like, lost me. But overall, this one was a really good book. Then we have Devil's Daughter. So this is the fifth one, fifth book of the Ravenel series. And so kind of like the other one that had Devil in the name, this is the, um, that same couple that, uh that had the hero from this one that he was the son of that couple from the wallflower series well this is their daughter so the hero and the heroine of these two stories they are brother and sister so she was actually the firstborn uh, so this book is about her. Um, she is a widow and a single parent. Um, her husband died which she I think she, I'm I would think that she was kind of expecting it because he was pretty sickly and he didn't want to get married to her because he didn't want that burden on her because he knew that he wasn't going to live very long because he was so sickly. But they were just childhood sweethearts and they were so in love. Um, she just really wanted to get married to him so they did and they have um, two children. But then like I said he passed away. Um, and so she is left kind of raising them by herself, sort of, um, since she's like an aristocrat and, you know, back in England, like she's got lots of people like maids and servants and, um, a nursemaid and stuff to kind of like, and her family too, to kind of help raise her kids with her. But anyway, and then the hero of this story is going to be Wes, Wes, Wes. And he is the brother of the hero from the first one. So the guy that kind of took over the dukedom, that's his younger brother. And he is just absolutely fascinated by um, this, the, hero, the heroine, uh, Phoebe is her name. Um, and I can't quite remember like the exact plot of this one. I just remember that's what the two characters are 
and she at first doesn't really like West and she doesn't really ever want to get like married like remarried um but he definitely wants to be with her and I just thought this one was just so sweet I gave this one four stars there's something about like when romance novels have like kids involved that I just like really it, I just find very heartwarming. I totally feel for the for the hero, heroine having two young children, and the West it was so good with her children, which just like melted my heart. It was so cute. I just I loved it. This one was really good. And then we have Chasing Cassandra, which is the sixth book of the Ravenel series, and this is about Pandora's twin Cassandra. Um. And she's just kind of, you know, she's seen her sister get married who didn't want to get married. But Cassandra is the exact opposite. She's always wanted to get married. She's always wanted to manage a household. She's always wanted to have kids. Yet then her sister, who she sees is getting married, never wanted to get married. And she's kind of like, ugh, why can't I find somebody and fall in love? Why is this not happening to me? And then she ends up running into this guy named Tom, who I think is, he's friends with some of the other male characters from this series. Um, and when he first sees her, he thinks she's absolutely gorgeous. And he's like, if I were to marry, that would be the woman that I would want to marry. So the caveat of this, you know, I think it would be all really good and well. Um, but the problem is Tom doesn't feel emotions, or at least he doesn't think that he feels emotions just because some things from his past. And she only wants to get married for love. And he's like, well, that's just not possible for me. I can't feel love. So you're going to have to settle if you want to get married to me. Um, when we have, like, they have a good, like, chemistry together. They have good sexual chemistry together. Even though, like, they don't actually, like, have sex or anything. But you can just, like, feel it. Um, and so she keeps, like, pushing him off because she's like, no, I'm not going to get married unless it's for love. Um, so that's pretty much the premise of this book. And they end up do wearing down. And, of course, the characters do fall in love. And it's, you know, how all good romance books end. Um, I gave this one three and a half stars. This one I have I didn't enjoy as much as the three prior books of this series. But it was, excuse me, but it was still really good. Now we're to a book that I don't actually own the physical copy of because this one's like brand new. Um, it's going to be Devil in Disguise, which is the last and final book of the Ravenel series. And this is the newest one. It just came out in September, I think, or August, like a month ago or something. So I don't actually own the physical copy of that one yet. Um, and this one, again, has characters that don't necessarily relate to the Ravenels. Um, this is about Merit, who, again, we get kind of a little bit of a nostalgic factor because she is the daughter of one of the Wallflower characters. Um, she is the daughter of the couple in the Autumn book from the Wallflowers. Um, and she is also a widow, but she is not a single parent widow. Um, she is trying to run her widow's business. He had like, uh, I think it was like a shipping business or something. And she ends up meeting this guy. He is a Scottish guy. Keir, I think is his name. Um, and he owns like some sort of, like a, I think a whiskey business. If I'm remembering correctly and there's something wrong with like his shipment or something so he ends up going and having to talk to her and they're immediately attracted to each other and so they decide to have like a one night stand kind of thing but then he gets jumped or something he gets like injured somehow and he ends up like having a concussion and hitting his head and then he ends up having amnesia and he doesn't remember Merritt like literally at all in their night together but when he was out cold she 
you know, has these feelings for him. So she was like, oh, we're, we're betrothed. We're getting married. And he was like, when he wakes up, he's like, I have no idea who this lady is. So if you like amnesia romance, I don't think I've ever read any of an, an amnesia romance before. Um, you might like this one. I give this one three stars. I, I know lots of people really like this book. I didn't really care for it. It wasn't terrible by any means. It was still a good romance story. And again, I did like that nostalgic factor. Um, cause then you also kind of hear, um, get a little bit more backstory about Kier too. And he ends up being like a bastard of this aristocratic person that we know. Um, I won't say who it is. Um, so, but at the same time, I also give this three stars because I felt like this should have just been like a standalone book. Like, I don't really see how it fit in with the whole Ravenel series. I think this could have just been left on its own because it didn't have the two characters weren't part of the Ravenel family. Um, but I think it could have been in like a standalone where you just see like, the snippets from other characters from the books like showing up um to get that again that like kind of nostalgic whatever kind of factor to it um and then again I just this just wasn't like my super like favorite romance I wasn't like super in love with both of the characters so that's kind of why I gave it more middle of the road like three stars so that's gonna be it for the Ravenels um, so I've made my way through a ton of Lisa Clayva. Those are like her biggest series. So the Wallflowers, the Hathaways, and the Ravenel series. And I read those in the order, which is recommended to read in that order, which I mean, you don't necessarily have to, but if you want that kind of like, oh, that character from that book showed up kind of feeling, then you should probably read it in that order. So I think I'm pretty... I'm, I'm done for a little bit on Lisa Claypess. I might read some, cause I think she has some other like series that are just like, like duologies, um, or just like standalone tier there that I am interested in reading. I just think I'm okay for right now on historical romances. I've, I've read a lot. So moving on. So then the next one that I read is going to be Dead Man Walking, which is the um, last book of the Fallen Men series so far that have been published. Like I said, she's planning, I'm pretty sure I heard she's planning on writing another one. And this one had a lot of hype and a lot of hype for me because I've heard this one for a lot of people has been like their number one book of the series and it rivaled and topped Zeus and I was like how in the world does that happen um anyway so this is about Priest who is the I think he's called the enforcer of the MC so that basically means he like tortures and kills people to protect the club or get information for the club um and he is a, I always get mixed up. I think he's a psychopath. I always get mixed up between psychopath and sociopath. I'm pretty sure he is a psychopath. I, I can never remember the difference between the two. Um, and then this is the heroine of the story is going to be B, who is Lou um, from Zeus and Lou's story. Lou's little sister. And... She, I think, is in college, and she has always had a fascination with Priest. Um, he calls her his little shadow because he, she just wants to follow him around everywhere like a little puppy. Um, and she describes that she's just always been attracted to dark and sinister things, even though on the outside she's seen as this, like, pure little, like, princess kind of character. She wears, like, bright, bubbly, bright, bubbly, if I can talk, colors. Um, so this is their romance. I, like I said, there was a lot of hype for this one. To me, this book did not live up to the hype. I gave this three and a half stars. I just, I had issues with this one. Not that, because this one is definitely a dark book. This is darker than the other books of this series. 
um, and especially because of Priest. Um, he is very quiet and doesn't let anybody into his personal life, um, mostly because he has a pretty traumatic past, um, trauma involving abuse and any other kind I, it's mostly just like mental and physical abuse in his past when he was a child um and then they also when they get into their like sexual like type situations um they they involve like knife play and like blood play I'm not 100% sure the difference between the two I'm sure you can have blood play without using knives but somehow you have to get like blood from somebody anyway um so their like kinks are a little bit more extreme than what I'm used to and especially from all the other characters of this series so that like all of that I was okay with um for the most part I just I used to gonna have stars because while I did overall enjoy the story I just felt like I could not really feel any kind of connection to either of the characters um and then I also feel like I didn't get enough development between the two characters um not that they didn't get any kind of development because they did it's just as compared to all the rest of the books of the series except for maybe like King and Cressida they didn't have too much development too um but all the other characters they like knew them as like children and kind of like develop from their kind of situation I just feel like they got together rather abruptly Whereas I felt like I kind of needed a little bit more build up to it. Not that there's not enough build. I feel like I'm rambling and going back and forth on it because I mean, this is like a really big book. I think this one is one of the largest of the series. Anyway, that's just kind of how I was feeling. I just kind of connected to the characters and I felt like I needed a little bit more development for the relationship to be believable, at least for me. Anyway, so that's why I gave, ended up giving this one three and a half stars. So now that I have finished the Fallen Men series again so far, um, it hasn't been announced yet who the characters of the next one are going to be about. But again, Zeus still for me reigns supreme. Um, Welcome to the Dark Side, Zeus and Lou's book is still remains one of my all-time favorite romance books and it is my absolute favorite from the series um so we'll see if this next one thinks it can take king off his crown i don't think it's gonna happen because i absolutely love it loves use okay then we have the x hex by aaron sterling so now we're getting it into more kind of a little bit more into like Halloween type books um which is what I've mostly been craving to read this month because it is October but I did want to first finish all the rest of those books were series that I had started and I wanted to finish before I moved on so um so this one is a brand new book it like just came out I think this month I think yeah, I think it came out this month. Um, and this is a very like witchy type book. This is about our hero Vivi. And when you first like start this book and get into it, she is absolutely distraught because she and her boyfriend broke up. Um, and so she's crying and trying to go through like all the processes after the you know, after you have a breakup. And she is a witch. Both of them are witches actually. And her friend kind of like talks her into hexing this guy as like revenge for breaking up with her and she doesn't think anything of it because it's just like oh it's just a harmless little hex it's not going to do anything so then years later um, I think that there's like 10 years later is where the majority of this book takes place the guy that broke up with her uh Reese is his name he ends up having to come back to the town during like around Halloween time because his family um were forefathers of the town or something 
and they bestowed like in lots of like magic into the town into like the ley lines that run under the town and every so often they have to return to the town to kind of just replenish it or whatnot so his father is making him go back to the town even though he doesn't really want to because he's kind of been avoiding the town because of Vivi because he still has feelings for her but things just where they were at at the time um weren't gonna like work out so that's kind of why he broke up with her um so then they end up running into each other and once he steps back to into the town is when the hex finally kind of comes to fruition um which he hadn't had it before because he hadn't come back to the town so when that happens he has tried to you know restore the lee line under this town but because he is hexed he is also kind of um transferred part of that hex sort of into the lee lines which um, all the magic in the town kind of stems from. So lots of different mishaps ensue and Vivi and Reese end up having to get back together to try to figure out for one they have to run around the town to try to clean up the different mishaps and stop things from happening and then number two they have to try to figure out how to get rid of this random hex that she placed on him um this was a really cute little story i ended up giving this three and a half stars um this wasn't like my favorite i tend to like my favorite type of like romance stories tend to be more from like independent book publishers instead of more traditionally published books they just don't have like everything that I'm looking for but this was still a really good book if you're a pretty more of like a traditional romance type of person I think you would really enjoy this one because it does have all like I said all the witchy vibes um this is a second chance romance because they do end up kind of rekindling their those flames whatnot um so and it's really cute and it also has if you like um like small town romance this also gave me those kind of vibes too so if you like all of those things i think you would really enjoy this and you'd probably give this more than three and a half stars but like i said the, for me it just didn't have quite all the things that i wanted but i overall i did really enjoy this one then we have some more books that I don't currently own, so there'll be pictures up over here. Um, the next one is going to be The Witch's Wolves by uh, Ellie Mae McGregor. This is a erotic novella. I think it's only like 50 or 60 pages. It's very, very short, very easy to get through, very quick. Um, so this is about this girl, I think, Manon? I think is her name. I think that's how you say that name. Um, and she, at the very beginning of the story, is running away from her town because she is being accused of being a witch for some of a little rather promiscuous type behavior. Um, because she is caught. I don't know if she's caught or that they just like ended up telling. She was caught um sleeping with the town priest like niece and the town that she's from is a very very conservative type town um but anyway so she is running away from town because they're going to end up killing her for being a witch and she runs into this cottage that's out in the woods and she finds that there are these two werewolves that are living at this cottage and the two werewolves they're both male and they are absolutely in love with each other and so that they decide to kind of take her in try to keep her safe for like a night or whatnot and then they just kind of decide that they want to have some sexy times together um so this is a mmf romance um between her and the two werewolf men and this also kind of has features some like monster sex i would consider anyway because the werewolf guys they are they're not 
100% human looking, but they aren't 100% wolf looking. They're almost kind of like a hybrid in between. Um, sort of like uh like how like Remus Lupin looks in um the Harry Potter movies but I just for me like because they have more a little bit more of like a snout of like their face but it's not like super like snouty if that makes any sort of sense um and they do have more hair on their body but I think and then maybe like long nails almost claws but I think that's pretty much it um honestly it didn't really bother me that much I didn't really notice that they looked like werewolves when they were you know doing their thing but I really enjoyed this one I gave this four stars I really liked the because it does talk about um kind of like that queer rep or whatever um and it does talk about you know loving who you want to love um and I just and they I just felt like the two male characters were just so accepting of the heroine because she's just like really feels really downtrodden um because the town just doesn't accept her for liking to have sex with lots of different people and that's just kind of how she is um, and they just don't accept her and they, they think that's wrong. So she just like feels really bad about herself and they kind of help her with that um, and make her see that she's a great person and whatnot. And I just, I thought it was really cute and beautiful and I loved it and it was very steamy too. So if you like a steamy kind of book, and like I said, this is really quick, it's really short and valid to get through. And the next one we have is going to be What the Hex by... Alexis Daria. I know it's Daria something. Daria is the last name. Alexis Daria. Um, so this is a, a another novella that I read and this unfortunately is exclusive to Audible. So if you do not like subscribe to Audible or do Audible, the Amazon um, audiobook service at all, you unfortunately will not be able to read this book because like I said it is only available on that platform. But I very much enjoyed this one. This is going to be another witchy book. This is about Kat. And she is returning to her home. I think it's like off the coast of Miami somewhere. For her sister's wedding. Um, and I think she's like a... The maid of honor? Maybe? She's in the wedding or something. So she's returning home for the wedding. And when she gets there, she meets the groom and discovers that he is being possessed by a demon. And nobody in the family knows this because he has all of them under his, like, thrall or spell or whatever you call that. Um, and he's trying to get her. And she, like, tries to run away and she's trying to, like, get him unpossessed. And she ends up running into the best man, who is the groom's brother, who also is the only one that is not under the spell and realizes that his brother is possessed by a demon. But she does not like this guy. She has a big grudge against this guy because they were enemies growing up, especially in school. And he ended up becoming a uh, valedictorian and she wanted to be valedictorian in school and she blames him for not being able to get that so she has a lot of resentment towards this guy does not really like him but they have to work together to try to save the wedding and um get this demon to unpossess the groom um, like I said, this was a, it's, this is a novella. It was very short. Um, it's very funny. It was also pretty dang steamy too for a little like cute novella. And I really enjoyed this one. I loved the culture of it. I love the two characters. I like kind of that enemies to lovers kind of thing. I thought this was just a very cute little novella. And the next one that I read is going to be Fables and Other Lies by Claire Contreras. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't 
really know if I can describe the plot of this book. It was very confusing. This is a, this is supposed to be like a, like a gothic, spooky kind of romance. There's some ghosts involved. Um, uh, the, the heroine of the story is another one that hasn't been to her hometown in a long time, but she is coming back. And I don't 100% remember why. I know she is a photographer and she works for, I think, like, real estate kind of businesses. She, like, takes pictures of these homes so that they can sell. I think that's why she's back. Because then she is supposed to go to this, like, mansion that they're that's trying to be sold. But it is the house of her family's, like, enemy. Um, and then there's this... Carna carnival I think that's going on too which is like a big kind of like celebration or something and like during this carnival one person is one male a man is selected to be like the leader of the carnival and it's for I think it takes place over like a couple days or a few days or a week something like that I don't know um then every night he gets to decide to, he can pick literally anybody at this carnival that he can take home with him and do whatever he wants to them. So, um, the leader ends up being the enemy guy. And of course, he always ends up picking her because he's attracted to her, um, to come home with him. And they, like, develop a romance like I said, this book was like, it was kind of all over the place. I did end up giving it three stars. Um, I might bump it down to like two and a half. It was just, it was hard to follow. And I know it. they were, the author was trying to be like very mysterious about it and make you, you know, so you don't know exactly what is so you don't know what exactly is going on in the story and what's not. Because like I said, there's like, there's mystery, it's spooky, and there does end up being some ghosts that get involved. Um, I don't know. And I, I just, it was very convoluted and just, like I said, kind of all over the place. And then I also didn't really care for the ending and what happened with that. It just didn't make it very much sense. And it very the very ending ended up being kind of convenient. I'll just say that. So I don't know. That's kind of how I felt about that one. Then, so now we're on to the very last book that I read in the first half of October, and that's gonna be Cemetery by Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Um, and this is a YA book. Um, this is a YA fantasy. Um, this is about yeah. I'm probably going to butcher all these names because I am not a Latin person and I am terrible at saying Latin names and things. So this is y Yadriel. Like I said, I'm pro probably butchering it. But anyway, so he is a teenager and all of his family are bru Bruhex, basically like a Latin version of like witches basically and everybody in the family if you're a male you become a brujo if you're a woman you'll become a bruja and there's different types of magic that are involved with both of those so Yadriel is transgender and he has not really been accepted as his, in his family as being a brujo. So he is kind of fed up and he has decided that he is just going to, like there's like a ceremony involved when you finally become an actual bruja or brujo, which he has not been allowed to have that ceremony. So he decides that he's just going to do it on his own with the help of his best friend, who I think is also like his cousin or something. And so he performs the ceremony and what he's going to do so the brujos can actually like summon spirits, I think is what they can do. And then they can also, um, send spirits away basically like to wherever spirits go. 
the afterlife or whatever. So he's going to prove this by trying to summon his cousin who the very beginning of this book just they all felt him die but they can't find his body and they can't find his spirit. So he decides he's going to summon his cousin's spirit to find out what happened to him and also again prove that he is a brujo and that he can be accepted in his family as being a brujo. But things don't go exactly as planned. He ends up summoning the wrong spirit. Um, he had summons the spirit of this um, high school boy, this boy that he went to high school with, um, but that I think it maybe dropped out. Maybe some, I don't know, something like that. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then he has to try to figure out, because that guy wants to figure out what happened to him, and he doesn't want Yadriel to send him to the afterlife until he helps him figure out what happened to him, like why he died. So a lot of different like teenager -y problems and stuff ensue in this one. I gave this one three and a half stars, mostly because I just, the more that I read YA, book, YA books, I find that they are definitely just not my genre anymore. Um, so that's more so why I kind of bumped it down a little bit. But overall, this is a really good book. Um, I do like some of the conversations that it has, especially in regards to um, like trans characters um, and the struggle that they, especially like the character in this book had with acceptance of his gender. Um, when, you know, especially like his father has a really hard time with it, um, since, you know, he used to be a different gender. So it's hard for acceptance for other people. Um, but just like the struggles that he kind of went through with that. Um, but then I also really loved the supportive characters in this too, and how much they supported him. Um, that was really good too. So that is this one. So that's going to be it for, I feel like this is going to be a very, very long video. I have a lot of books and a lot of books to talk about. A lot of things to say about those books. But anyway, so that is going to be at the end of the book. So I am, I'm still in like the spooky vibes. Um, so look forward to my end of October wrap up. There will definitely be a lot of more like spooky type books uh gothic kind of romance books um like I said that's just kind of what I'm in the mood for right now for Halloween season um so if you like this video make sure you hit the thumbs up button um leave a comment down below I look forward to hearing from you make sure you subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more videos from me and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one bye guys